Thank you, Michael. Um, going back through uh, uh, Saturday's game with uh, Kansas State, uh, just uh, much like I thought after the game, uh, just after reviewing it, the major strong point and story of the game is, is uh, you know, two major turnovers that, that result in a 14-point swing. Um, you know, that makes the rest of the day, you have to play perfect to have a chance to overcome it against maybe a, you know, an average team, let alone a, a top 10, 15 team, wherever Kansas State is, um, you know, you, you just, it's just difficult to play perfect the rest of the day and overcome that, and we weren't able to do it. And we end up losing by five, and it kind of overshadows any of the, the good parts of the game that you may have had. So, um, you know, in the end, um, you know, that's what happened. We, we've got to be good enough not to have those turnovers. Uh, we've got to... And then, you know, other areas through the game, I, I think, um, you know, uh, again, you're always looking for, for more improvement. And I thought we could have been better on each side of the ball and a couple of uh, two, three extra third, third downs uh, conversions one way or the other uh, could have possibly helped, you know, give us an opportunity or put us in a position to still overcome, you know, those major turnovers. But um, I thought our team played hard. I, I thought they uh, prepared well, uh, worked hard through the week, uh, two weeks leading up to it. And uh, so we have to take what's positive about it, uh, continue to build on it, uh, keep a good attitude, our guys will, and uh, try and continue to, to correct, um, you know, whether it be turnovers or, you know, polish up other areas in particular, like I said, made some third downs to give ourselves, um, you know, uh, more opportunities to stay on the field or to get off the field. Um, we'll use this week. Uh, we'll practice like we always do Monday through Thursday, uh, working on Texas Tech along with hopefully he's starting today, you know, going back through uh, the last game or two and, and uh, correcting any mistakes that we, you know, that we felt, you know, were out there that we could, you know, we can work on and and uh, try and improve. But, but again, the majority or all the work from there on will be working on Texas Tech. Ever since the loss of Ryan Broyles, the offense production has gone down big time. Can one player be that much of a difference, or what are the other factors in the offense going down? Well, I don't, I, I, I don't know that one one guy is, can make that much difference. Though, you know, Ryan Broyles being a first team All American was pretty, uh, pretty special as a player. But I, I feel uh, the other pieces around him, you know, all all have to continue to develop. Can, Contribute all those guys are I think are, I believe are coming along, you know uh, I think our, our guys are you know the receivers. I thought did a nice job, you know the other night um, And are getting better making improvement. We had a lot of good runs through the day. Could it be better? Sure We got to We got to keep getting more consistency But there were a lot of good runs through the day Bob, how can you improve the run defense? You had more yards than they did, but they had over 200 rushing. What can you do? Well, uh, Kansas State, when you run the ball 45 times, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have 200 yards rushing. If you know, uh, in the end, um, I, I believe they had right around 200 a year ago and 17 points on defense, and we played a pretty good game. Um, so uh, that's just the nature of some people and the way their their attack's going to be. Um, you know, if you're going to you know, run the ball 44 or five times a game, whatever it was, and use your quarterback running it as much as you are, that's going to be part of, you know, that's going to be part of it. Um, you know, I, I thought for the most part, we did a pretty good job. You got the, we had the one uh, run that the running back got out on. Um, but outside of that, you know, the guys were pretty decent. Well, how do you, you talk about making improvement, correcting mistakes, those kind of things, but Generally, when you talk about that, you talk about guys who haven't played that much or still fairly young. When a guy, a fifth-year senior like Landry, duh, I mean, what can you do for a fifth-year senior in that regard? Well, I, I, I think uh, Landry's, uh, I, I know Landry's a very bright guy that watching it will see, you know, that, that maybe he's trying to make a little too much out of something. And, and when he, you know, to feel the, the opportunity just to throw it away at times is a good play, you know, and in, instead of trying to force it and, and, uh, and, and he'll see that, you know, Landry, Landry gets that. And, uh, and again, I think it's just, it's still a process working with, 
with some of the new pieces, but he, he, he's got to make a better decision in, in those areas. Is there anything you can do schematically to try to limit that? Is there, is there some plays you take out? or? Well, there, there's always some of that um, that you can limit, you know, what you know what you're giving them the opportunity to do. So, sure, I mean, that, those are things that, you know, I think every coach, once if something bad goes wrong, say, says, well, I wish I would have did something different. You know, that's, that's always the case when you're in a coach's position. You have such a, a long, I mean, he has such a long history. He's played so many games. And not that you haven't done this already, but does it make you go back and take a harder look at maybe, you know, into 2010 when he was playing so well? And you look at it, what, you know, the offense was doing then and see if you can implement more of that? Or? Well, you know, we're, we, we still do, you know, quite a bit of what we were doing then, you know, so it's just doing it better, you know, and, and the guys around them, you know, also executing better. But Is there a point at which the mistakes are too much and you have to go with somebody else? No. Do you treat him, uh, I don't know, his emotional makeup, his mental makeup, he knows how good he is. He knows how good he can be. He knows what he's done pro, uh, productive-wise in his career. How do you move forward with that? Do you have to? Just telling him those things that we, we, we do have confidence in him. The guy's played a ton of really good football. And, uh, you know, and, and the other night he had a bunch of good throws. But, you know, we, he has to avoid the, the, you know, the, the bad ones, the bad plays. And he knows that. And uh, so... Um, he's a mature guy that everybody has confidence in, and I just believe he'll, you know, he'll 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 make up for it as he moves forward. Bob, you in the, in the game in the first quarter, you ran the ball successfully, and you kind of went away from it in the middle of the game. Is this something that's still developing within your offensive run game and where you want it to be? Yeah, I mean, we again we 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 ran it well for you know we had a lot of good runs in there, and it's just part of the flow of the game. You're you're running it, throwing it. Middle, of the, you know, the last drive of the half, we're in a two-minute drill, um, you know, trying to go down. So we, we're going to always try and continue to, to work the run game and, and mix it up. Can you tell if, if, if Landry plays better when you run to hurry up? Um, for the most part, um, you know, we, you know, we've done pretty well with it. You know, we, we have executed better in the hurry up, and we're aware of that. You know, so it's it's just one of those uh, instances with changing personnel. How fast can you go, or when you're at there and you feel you need to change a play, and you you know, and that's what slows it down sometimes. So would you like to keep there at a quicker pace? It, it, to a degree, yeah. As long as long as it continues to do, you know, the they're you know, long as they're moving the football and scoring points, it's fine. But again, sometimes uh, depending on what the defense is doing, you need to change the play, or when you change personnel. It slows you down too, and, and sometimes getting to certain plays, you got to change personnel. One of his uh, main directives in the offseason for for his own game, Landry, was uh, to improve his footwork, to get quicker. To that seems to in Saturday's game uh, have been counterproductive. In other words, he left the pocket twice, maybe when he probably should have stayed in and either thrown it away or waited for a receiver. Um, can something like that? I mean, the work that he put in during spring break, he goes to California and. Can something like that be counterproductive to, to a guy's uh, nature? And I, I, don't, I, I see what you're saying, and, and, and to a degree, yes. But, but being quicker, having the ability to escape and move overall is going to help him, and, it, and, it's, and it's a positive thing. And, uh, you know, so I, I, the one instance like the other night, yeah, it, it, you know, he got stripped from behind. It, it, it would have been better to throw the ball away. But that, that's going to happen, you know, here or there. I, I don't, when you're escaping, you don't want it to happen. But in the end, uh, I still believe it's positive what the work that he's done, and, and in the end, will help him. Bob, some of the uh, natives are restless, concerned the program's headed in the wrong direction. If two or three of those plays had gone your way and you win the ball game, do you feel that it would be a different atmosphere here or? Uh, well, it didn't, you know, but uh, yeah, if you win the game, you know, things, things are always different and in a place where you, you, you hardly ever lose in a place that you, you know, where you're used to winning so much, you know, that they're, that you're going to be criticized and they're going to be restless, but that's, you know, that's the nature of, you know, of a place like this and, a, and part of what we've built here. And, uh, so you just move forward and don't worry about them. They don't, you know, they don't, uh, they don't affect the outside world. Doesn't affect what you try and do. The quarterback position is it one where perhaps you get too much praise when things are going good, maybe too much criticism when things are going bad? 
Well, I think it's fair to say, sure. It's, it's, you know, it can be that way, definitely. You said you hadn't talked to him after the game. Have you had a conversation with Landry? I mean, like you said, he's had so many great moments. Would he benefit maybe just from a, a talk? Oh, I will. I, I will today when I see him. What what tell what him? I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to tell him. I'll, I'll visit with them and then we'll have our conversation. What did you see when you watched him? Because he's missed some throws that he would normally make. I mean, they had just, just the turnovers. Is there something mechanically or maybe something that's going on with him? It seems like he's missed throws that he would normally make. Well, um, now there's nothing wrong with him, so I don't, I don't know how to answer that other than he just missed them. Bob, what things can be done defensively to force some more turnovers? Um, prop, you know, as much as anything, just, um, you know, trying to get more pressure. And, and they're, you know, a team that, uh, uh, you know, the way they run the football, they, they're a hard team to pressure. You know, they, they kind of, you know, what they're running in, in the running quarterback and whatnot, it's a team that, that really kind of relishes it if in certain looks and, and they take advantage of it. So we didn't get as much as you'd like. But that, that as much as anything, I think, is a key. And then just, you know, trying to get more strips, you know, trying to just trying to knock the ball out as well. Bob, on the third down conversions late in the game, I think Mike said after the game that they threw some stuff at us that we weren't ready for. Uh, what did he mean by that? Some people are saying, well, you had an extra week to practice. You should have. Well, they just, no, we, I mean, it's stuff that we worked, but they, they didn't, hadn't done it as much with all the, uh, the no back uh, formation, all the empty sets is something that, that they did more of than they had in the past. But again, it's something that, you know, we go against our offense, we see, you know, uh, as well. So we, and we covered, you know, how many of those they, they got it by an inch. One time they're a half yard short, another time they're a half yard, they make it. So it wasn't like we weren't on them and in closing. It's just they, they just executed them a little bit better than we did. So you didn't bust assignments actually? We had, we had one just uh, breakdown in coverage on the, uh, on the swing late in the game. That was the only one through the whole time. And that was a, that was just a misread. You know, by one of the one of the DBs in there. You guys had two weeks to, to prepare, and uh, several times you had to burn timeouts defensively. Looked like either you guys were lined up wrong. What was going on there with those with those situations? Just communication of who was covering one of the receivers and who was going to be free. Bob, uh, understanding uh, Blake had a, a fumble in his first play out there, but you have a first down at the two. You have a one-yard loss, then you bring him in on second down. I'm just curious, kind of why it seems like, you know, it's there's not really a standard plan for when you're going to use the bell dozer and when you're not. Well, you you, uh, you get it. We just ran the ball for nine yards down to there, so you figured you could, you know, let's go back in for the the last yard. Well, then you lose a yard or two. I said no. Let, let's get get Blake back in there. So. We're, we're going to once in a while, it doesn't have to always be him. So in the end, Damian had just had a good run. You have some confidence, hey, let's just stick it in. As well as sometimes you want to go right to the line and do it. So rather than substituting. But, you know, so uh, that's part of the reason. Was there? There's a plan. It's, it's those two things. Was there a lot of talk on the sideline about putting him into the two point conversion after you called the timeout? There was. Um, I had, we had discussed it, and it's just you know you they, had, it's just three yards is a little different than one or two, you know, and so it's just a little bit, you know, it was just we felt a little bit out of reach. Landry has uh, six turnovers in, in your last two conference games. What can you do to to get his confidence positive again after after Saturday? Well, I don't. Uh, you know, you 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 look at it that way, but no one's sitting here. That's a year ago. So he has, you know, we're talking about this week. So I think as much as any as anything, you just get out and you, you keep executing, you keep working. Um, you know, you're running the same routes and polishing them up, get them, you know, uh, understand when you can make a better decision, throw the ball away. Um, you know, those kind of things, or just eat the ball, take it, take the sack, keep the ball. Were those things he was doing at the end of 2010, as somebody mentioned, when, when he was playing so well during that stretch? Well, yeah, you know, uh, what, what are you asking me? I was asking, what, what about him in 2010 that, that he was playing at such a high level that, that maybe he's not doing now? Well, you're, you're talking about a different team that's two years ago, you know, with a lot of different parts. 
So it's not it's it's not the same team, you know, the same guys around them. Everything. So that guy operates with ten other guys, and so all ten of them, all eleven, you know, he with the other ten, we've got to all just be, you know, be more precise in everything we're doing. That that's the difference. How do you offensive line play? Um. Okay, and for a good part of the game, uh, you know, good for part of the game, but needs to be better. Needs to keep being better. Um, you know, they uh, again, you're playing against a good team. They had their moments. We had ours. You know, yardage wise, all that kind of thing. That's all the same. You know, but the turnovers, you know, make it make it quite different. Do you enter a game? Does the offense enter a game? with an idea of how frequently it's going to go no huddle, how frequently it's going to push the pace, pace, and you know how frequently it's going to put guys in and bring them out to affect that, or is that all sort of game time? It's, it's, you have an idea going in what you'd like to do, but then, you know, then the circumstances in the game kind of you have to adjust to. And uh, so it, the, the game then affects it, you know, of, of how much you do it more or less sometimes depending on how the game's going. Execution aside, were you satisfied with how frequently you went fast, how frequently you didn't, or I mean, or, or is there anything there to change up the management a little bit? I, I whether it's fast or not, just like uh, I've said for a number of years, whether you're fast or not, it's all, and it, it, that isn't the reason you, you're. It's execution is what allows you to move the ball and and to succeed, whether it's fast or slow. So overall, anytime you know we're not moving the football to me it needs to it, it's the you know it's it's just that it's you know it's the execution needs to be better is it but is there a rhythm component to creating the execution to a degree okay mm-hmm Bob the last few years there have been Landry's made several big throws under center off play action dating back even dating back to the Sun Bowl um, I think he had Rattery to get you guys in position to score the, the game winner the Hannah play at OSU was, was in that situation why is that out of the playbook well, we're just been more from from the pistol formation, so you still you still have the opportunity to run all the same plays. We just feel it's it's easier to operate in that situation. But you could still run all your play action from the pistol as you do from under center. You have all the same plays, and and it is something that we want to continue to have more of play action and, and trying to get more bigger shots. Bob, are you pleased with the on-field leadership? And if not, what can you do as a coach to? I am pleased with it. You know, and 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 I I, I want to defend even you know Blake and Landry. They didn't, they're not out there uh, you know lackadaisical or didn't you know they're not doing that on purpose to drop the football. It's just it you know it's a, it's something that happened. Uh, I'm sure you know they're disappointed about it, but hey, we got We got to come back and 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 in the end. Um, Again, I, I am pleased with the leadership. I think our guys have worked hard, and I thought they played hard the other night. We just couldn't overcome that, and uh, there are mistakes. And and again, but they're good kids. They worked hard, and again, they weren't out there being lackadaisical about it. It hurts them, but we, you know, we we just got to move forward. Um, you have a, a guy in Shepard who's emerging in your offense. It looks pretty special. Can you talk about his future a little bit in this offense and maybe how that's going to develop in the future? Well, Sterling uh, had a bunch of uh, really good plays, big plays, was uh, our player of the game, actually. And uh, um, just a competitive guy, plays plays stronger and more competitively than, than about most freshmen you'll see. You know, he just, uh, he's, um, you know, just got a special talent and, and attitude about him and has an ability to make plays. So he's we're we're excited about his future for sure. Would that allow ball. Stills to go outside a little bit more with it? At times, ball? you know, it, it can. We'll we'll see how that keeps developing. You know, the offense has been so good for so many years. Uh, now it's fallen off. You go, okay, we gotta tweak things, we gotta do things differently because what we're doing now isn't working like what we were doing before. Yeah, you're always tweaking things and and trying to play to your personnel. Like, like I said, we've we've got quite a few new pieces, um, you know, that we're working with. Every, you know, all the new receivers, uh, new tight ends. Um, you know that that needs to continue to de uh, to develop. And then as they develop, who are our better ones? And how do we play to their strengths? How do we you know stay away from their weaknesses? If, so you're always looking at that. If Blake Bell won the starting job next year, would you put in some quarterback run play? 
well, we'll see, you know. Um, it's fair to say, I mean, we already have some of them with them, so. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Sterling Shepard was starting to draw comparisons to Ryan Broyles. When did you know what you had in Sterling? Um, you know, in, in, in two days, once you had a chance to start working with him, you could tell how, uh, how quick and fast he is, how uh, easy he runs routes, um, you know, how well he catches the ball, you know, how, how, how bright he is at picking things up. So you could, you could tell pretty early once, you're at, once you started working with him. Did you know he had that kind of a vertical? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. How? Yeah. Well, we get to we get to see him, you know, when work out and see him jump after things, that, you know, going after stuff in practice. You know, we we could a lot of these guys would surprise you. They like, put on quite a dunking exhibition if you ever had one. Bob, when you have a running back like Damian Williams, who through these games has shown himself to be a, a legitimate home run threat, and even in this game, if I hadn't been called back, um, does he need to be getting more than nine and ten carries a game? Yeah. Yeah, he needs to he needs to keep getting the ball more. Uh, definitely, that's something that we want to do. I mean, as the season goes on, will his carries just increase? Or yeah, they should. Yeah. yeah. Kind of going along with that, what decides how many carries each running back gets? Because Whaley, he only got nine carries, but he's averaging almost six <coughs> yards a carry in Saturday's game. What kind of goes into? Again, it's it's you know it's uh, when do they need spelled? What do you feel you're going to mix up? You know, run and pass. So there's there's no magic number. It's just how the game's going, and and sometimes who gets hot, you keep feeding it to them. Um, you know, all those components. There isn't an exact number, but you do want you know you know guys like uh, Damian Dom to to hopefully get between catching the ball or screens and or running it. You know, to have the, have their hands on the ball 15, 20 times, at least. What was the play when? What was it called when Finch almost ran into Landry and then they overturned it? What yeah, well, it's a, just a quick shovel pass that, you know, it's the it's quick that everybody does. And we've always, you know, thrown it this way for the reason that happened, that rather than handing it off or, you know, uh, because if, if you have a, a, a miscommunication or a bobble, like, you know, if he misses it, it's an it's a incompletion, not a fumble. So... Uh, we, uh, you know, we we felt certain when we, you know, had to, I was going to review it, but he said that they were already reviewing it, that that's what happened. Did the know that play was intended for him? Yeah, he just the timing was off. He was sprinting. He had passed Landry by. He wasn't even looking back when the ball. Was well, Landry running. has the opportunity to, depending on what the defense does, to give it to him or to hand it off. I think your safeties had 26 tackles on Saturday night. How much of that was, I guess, scheme or scheme? That, that you have to. The front seven did pretty well um, overall. Um, time or two again, you're playing a good team. A time or two, they got us. We we had our times. Um, the safeties uh, intentionally, when you're using the quarterback to run the football and and all the different schemes that they use, you have to have them. So. Um, they, and they, they both had quite a few tackles. Bob, the weekly Roy Finch question, people want to see more of Roy Finch, especially after that run the other night, and wondered why he didn't. I know. I mean, you know, again, people want Roy to get it more. People want Damien to get it more. People want Dom to get it more. People want Sterling to get it more. You can, you know, it just, you, you do the best you can with the, what the, the formations and plays you have and trying to play to our team's strengths, and we'll, we'll keep working that. You know, and, and, and follow up on his, a lot of people, and you've talked how good Miller is, but. Well, he needs to get it more, too. I know. So you just, <laughs> we stay on the field more, those guys will get more plays. So, you well, know. The question is with Rory, though, is clearly he seems to be a guy who can make things happen. He has in the past. Is he in a doghouse? Excuse me. Or is no, he, he's, he's not in any doghouse. He's, Roy is fine. He's doing great, and we love Roy. So, but as he moves forward, if he, you know, just like. Everyone else also, any, any guy that's playing or not playing, it's because of what they do all week and, and everything else. So we, we're, we evaluate it all the time. Was well, there anybody you would like to see get it more? Would you just like 95 offensive snaps? I'd like 95, 100 offensive snaps, and maybe everybody would be happy. You know, that's what we're trying to do. With Mike back three games, do you feel like he's settling in with the, with the defensive calls during the games? Uh, yes, but uh, you know, again, I uh, yeah, I do. Uh, they're 
and it's got to. Everybody needs to keep improving and getting better. Bob, if you've got all these guys you just mentioned, you know that people want to see more, and they've seen these flashes out of, and, and you come out with 19 points. So what's going wrong with this offense if you got all these playmakers? Well, we fumbled the ball on the, you know, on the one yard line, so they got a chance to should have another touchdown, and then you. Uh, you know, you turn it over another two times, you know. I, I said, and I said earlier, in some of the third down conversions, we need to be better at. Late in the game, it seemed like uh, Kenny was had two or three guys around him a lot. Were they doing something to limit him uh, late in the game or to, to take him out of the game? No, nothing that they weren't, you know, they didn't change their defense. They, they had done a, you know, they do a good job, you know, all the time of being disciplined in their coverages, but they didn't change anything. You said uh, after the game Saturday, to my question about toughness, you said, well, I think we're tough enough. Uh, maybe we're not good enough, or I think maybe we're not a good enough team. We weren't good enough to overcome two, a 14-point swing. How much of the three games that we've seen so far is, is, can be attributed to talent, whether it's recruiting over the last three years or just talent that's on the field? I, I don't know. You could you know, equate it how you want. I mean, uh, it's regardless, we've got to keep trying to improve. After the, after the long touchdown run that was called back and you said that you want to see Damian get the ball more, was do you wish that he'd gotten the ball more after that play in that game? It, you know, I, I got all, a lot of confidence in Dom too. So however our guys feel they're, you know, they're, they're doing it, I have confidence in them. So I got a lot of confidence in Dom as well as Damian. You said you like the, uh, the leadership of this team. Do you like the mental toughness of it or is that something you're getting ready to find out more about? Well, we'll find more out more about it, and uh, so we'll we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got no reason to doubt it. Are you surprised you struggled through three games? Did you see this in the fall camp? Or? No. It, it, did I? My surprise? We had a dogfight with Kansas State. No. Yeah, but you haven't you haven't performed even the UTEP game you won. I mean. I, that one did, didn't so much surprise me when you have all the new young players we had playing. But I did feel like we would play better than that. But I knew it wouldn't be as perfect as everyone, you know, was expecting. Do you still have the same ceiling for you guys? You we, you we got, we, we're optimistic and positive about what our opportunities are. We've got to keep working it and, uh, and take care of the football. And, and a lot of these, you know, these – and you take care of the ball, a lot of these questions aren't there. The, uh, the, uh, I don't know, the focus, the passion, the fire, whatever the intensity, whatever that word is, you pleased with that? I am. Particularly Saturday night. That, was, that wasn't an issue with you at all. No. The answer you gave to Jake about the mental makeup of the team and how you're, you're optimistic, you, you, don't, you don't doubt it, what leads you to, to believe that? Why I'm optimistic? Yeah, I mean, what, what have you seen to, to make like last year? You, you guys did not struggle, or you guys struggled with adversity when you lost your, the first game with Tech. You, you, obviously, things didn't. What, it wasn't the same team. Why will this year be different? In your well, opinion? we don't know. We, we've only played three games. Uh, I, I'm optimistic because we played another. What's Kansas State ranked? They were fifteenth. Oh, whatever. My meaning meaning <laughs> we just played. We 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 have two major turnovers. That and you're still in the game. You lose by five points, and we played a darn good football team, and and we we had a lot of good plays. We we played in a lot of spots. We played really well against them, and and so uh, if we we can learn to take care of the football and keep building, I'm optimistic we can beat teams like that if we'll take care of the ball. How much film, either watching whoever, have you got to see of other Big 12 teams so far as of right now? I don't know. What do you mean? How much? I, I mean, mean, have you seen all of them play to some degree? To or? some degree. It looks like a sort of a wide open league. Is it, I, I is think it, it usually is. Uh, in my uh, eyes. Well, sometimes it's not all that wide open. I've, but, I've felt I've felt it is, but it looks more wide open than ever before in terms of who could win it and all that kind of stuff. Is it? A, is this a case where you just need to try to, you know, navigate the, the stream and? That's what we do every, constantly. It's what we do every year, uh, regardless of what everyone thinks. Um, every year at us is a, is a major challenge. Every game's hard. Um, you invest in, in trying to improve and get better, and uh, that's what we'll do this year. Bob, it seemed that 
there's panic on the outside of the program. It sounds like what we're hearing is steady as she goes, and there's really well, no changes. You're on, you're on track. Is absolutely. Again, if uh, you know, we're not going to drop the ball. You know, on a on a second and one, running the play again, or you know. But you know, those kind of things. Uh, you know, we I feel we can correct, and if we do, it's a different game against another good football team. Again, it wasn't like. You know, we didn't know, everyone didn't know they were a good football team coming in. You, you've never dropped the ball on the, on the uh, belldozer. But you we, did it, we did the first time at Kansas State last year. But we have seen that play we saw from Landry. We've seen it each of the last two years also in critical situations. Is it to the point where you just sort of have to live with, no, that might happen? No, I don't think it will happen, you know, continue to happen. Okay, thank you.